It's the 37th film in the Godzilla franchise, and many are saying it could be the best one ever. Let's talk about Godzilla Minus One. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for Godzilla Minus One. This is still playing in theaters, and uh, it is, as of uh, last week, the most successful Japanese film of all time in the United States. Um, and I believe worldwide it maybe is the most successful Godzilla film ever as well. Um, so a lot of accolades for this. It's at, I think, 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, many people are saying this is uh, quite possibly the, the best Godzilla film ever made. So I was certainly intrigued by this. So uh, we'll talk about the specifics here in just a moment. But first, let me welcome you into Damn Reviews. It. Thank you for finding this video. We do movie and TV reviews here and just about every day something new goes up. So always a lot to check out. Uh, please consider subscribing. Hit that like button. Uh, comment down below. What did you think of Godzilla Minus One or uh, any of the Godzilla movies? I would love to hear your thoughts there. And uh, check out my links below in the description as well. The Facebook group, uh, the X, formerly Twitter, uh, and both of those places I post my uh, new videos when they come out. But also, I just added uh, my Letterboxd link as well. Letterboxd is a great way to uh, to sort of rate movies and uh, kind of chart which ones you've seen and such. So I have a, a Letterboxd. You can check out all of my movies there. And uh, even sometimes, you know, before I do the review, um, you can check it out on Letterboxd uh, with my star grade, at least. They, they don't do letters like I do. They do the stars. But anyway, let's talk about Godzilla Minus One, shall we? Um, so like I said, it's the 37th Godzilla movie. Um, and for me, I have only seen uh, the recent American ones. Um, I think there's been three of them now. Um, and then I did see one um, from way back in the day. I want to say the 1960s. It might have been like the first one. Um, I saw that a few years ago uh, with my old buddies from uh, another show. I used to do Film Fanatics. And um, that's it. Like, I am by far not a Godzilla scholar. You know, I, I really, I know the basics, um, but it's not something I grew up watching. You know, I know uh, it was like a, in the 80s, it was like a Saturday afternoon staple on TV. And I, I just, I never really got into it. Um, so this for me was uh, a tough choice. You know, do I even see this? Because I don't review a, a ton of foreign movies. Um, and certainly I, I usually don't go to the theater to see them. But this thing, just came out of nowhere, blew up. I think its opening weekend was the most successful for a Japanese film ever in America. And like I said, just as of last week, it is the number one uh, Japanese film of all time with box office growth. So, uh, you know, so I saw this thing uh, over uh, the, the, the New Year's break and um, was honestly just blown away by it. The, the basic plot is um, that this takes place in uh, post-war Japan. Um, so it is, you know, the, the minus one, I guess, alludes really to the um, you know, it, it's being kind of a prequel to a lot of the things that, that we already know, uh, from the Godzilla world. So this pl takes place, uh, you know, in, in post-war Japan and, uh, they are dealing with the emergence of Godzilla. But, uh, not only that, this, this movie is so much more than that. Um, so let's, uh, well, okay. So it was directed by, let's start there, uh, Takashi, uh, Yamazaki, um, it was not only directed by him, but written by him, and he did the visual effects as well. You know, um, a, a lot of these uh, these other countries that don't have the uh, the studio system of Hollywood, you know, where you have to have all your your uh, ducks in a row, and okay, you must have eight hundred people work on the project. No, they a lot of these uh, people will do it all themselves, you know, so he wrote, directed, and did the special effects for this movie, um, and, and they're all impressive, uh, and from a U.S. Uh, standpoint of money, um, it was made for less than 15 million U.S. dollars. That's amazing, you know, and obviously we don't expect Godzilla to necessarily have the greatest visual effects, you know, I think Warner Brothers has kind of turned that model on its ear a little bit with the most recent movies. They're like, let's throw $200 million at it. It'll be this huge spectacle. And uh, and that's great uh, for those movies, but none of them ever got higher than probably a B for me, uh, or maybe even a B minus. And uh, the reason is um, that the character development is near zero. You don't care about any of the characters in those recent Warner Brothers movies. Um, so when one of them dies, you're just like, okay, well, that sucks for him. I like that actor, but I guess we won't be seeing him anymore. Like, you know, you just don't care. 
what this movie gets right uh, more than just, okay, yeah, there's awesome Godzilla sequences. Um, you know, maybe there's not enough of them for certain moviegoers. I, you know, I think um, for, it's rated PG-13. I think, you know, kids under maybe 11 or 12 probably won't care much about all of the character development here because there is probably more of it than than maybe uh, some people would want from a Godzilla movie. Um, but that being said, the sequences with Godzilla are awesome. And there is one right away. Um, so, you know, that gets us right into it. But then there's, you know, a, a big chunk of character development and dialogue and all of this uh, really, really intense uh, stuff about PTSD and survivor's guilt and, and all of these really interesting things that, uh, look, again, I'm not a Godzilla scholar, but I'm not sure uh, a Godzilla movie has ever gone that far into um, developing these characters, making us care about these characters so much um, so that when Godzilla, you know, returns a little bit later in the movie, you're like, oh, no, not, you know, not these people. We love them. Um, so, so the the action sequences certainly are great. Uh, again, I think, you know, maybe a little bit more um, sporadic than some would want. But if you want to uh, go see a dramatic movie uh, that happens to also have some really cool action sequences, uh, you know, and, and you already watched John Wick 4, um, then, you know, this this is probably going to scratch that itch. Um, and, and boy, I, you know, of course, I don't know any of these actors. You know, I don't know if they're famous in Japan. I don't know if they're, you know, this is their first movie. I have no idea. Um, but they certainly do a good job with the with the material and making us care uh, about those characters. And, and that's just, it's something I have not yet experienced in a Godzilla movie. If, if there's some that exist from the past, um, you know, let me know those in the comments and, and maybe I'll check those out. But, um, you know, fr from the ones I've seen recently from the Warner Brothers output, they're, they're, it's just lacking that. Yeah, the, the action sequences are cool and I can tell they spent millions and millions and millions of dollars on them. Um, but this really does take it back to basics. And in fact, um, this will be interesting when this comes out uh, for home viewing on Blu-ray uh, and 4K because this just this week was released in Japan again as Godzilla minus color. It is a black and white version, um, which I always find interesting. Um, you know, it, it, I, in fact, there's a few movies I will turn my color off on the set to watch because I think it makes it more intense. I bet this would be one of them, um, especially because it's got that that retro feel. Um, so yeah, this, if, if this is uh, still playing in select theaters, um, I would recommend checking it out there. Uh, you can see it on a big screen. Um, but if not, I, I'm intrigued if they're going to have the Godzilla minus color version on the Blu-rays um, and, and 4K for home viewing uh, when that gets released. But uh, for me, this is easily one of the best action movies of the year. It's certainly of, of the four Godzilla movies or five now that I've seen, this is by far the best, um, you know, but uh, I leave Godzilla minus one with an A minus and much like John Wick chapter four and Mission Impossible from this year, um, I'm, I'm like teetering between that A minus and A, maybe in a couple weeks when, when I firm up my 2023 ratings, maybe this will be an A, I, I could definitely see that. Uh, but for now, we'll leave it with the A minus. And uh, like I said, you can check that out in theaters now, Godzilla minus one. All right. Thank you so much for watching Dan Reviews It. We'll see you next time. Bye.